Um, I want to thank Vicky, Vicky for the introduction. And I'm really happy to be here with you this morning. It's such a beautiful morning, and this is a beautiful way to start the day. So today's talk is going to be about the discernment of the spirits. The, I'm going to do the first week and the second week. These rules apply to the spiritual life in general. When the best of me is barely breathing When I'm not somebody I believe in Hold on to me When I miss the light The night is stolen When I'm slamming all the doors you've opened Hold on to me Hold on to me I love that song. Uh, the first time I heard that song, I was at a retreat and it reminded me of the sermon. It reminded me as you walk through life, God hold on to me as I make decisions. So today I'm going to start off with talking about discernment, just so we understand what discernment is. And it's a lot of different definitions for it. So discernment is a gift that teaches us how to know the difference between good and evil and how to choose. Reading the movements within me and taking advantage of that knowledge to help me make better decisions. About seeing and listening to God and following his lead and being able to separate what is important from what is irrelevant. Ignatius rule for discernment, the good to receive it and the bad to reject it. Knowing, and knowing the difference of the movement. So the first rule we're going to look at today is sin. When a person sin, the evil spirit will propose central delights and pleasures in order to hold them so they will grow in their vices and sin. The good spirit will use the opposite method, pricking them and bringing the consciousness through the process of reasoning. So the evil spirit is going to try to hold you there, and the good spirit is going to gradually try to move you away from it to show you what you're doing is not what you really want to do. When choosing good, trying to follow Christ, the evil kicks up its methods. The evil spirit would do anything to discourage or confuse you, to move you into desolation. The good spirit would comfort you, encourage you to make things clear. So once again, you, and you'll see in all the rules the opposite. One spirit does one thing, the other spirit does the other. So let's look at constellation with the good spirit. In constellation, the movement is towards God. Positive feelings, lots of positive feelings. It increased the faith, hope, and love. The love for one another. All that is beautiful and good and feeling good about yourself. Now, constellation, when you think about constellation, it's that warm feeling when you walk outside in a beautiful day and you feel God's presence because it's about the movement from God to God. 
Um, like desolation, it's about the moving away from God. One of the things that I was taught, and I really, I was like, oh, okay. They said, when you're in constellation, prepare for desolation. And I thought, wow, you know. But desolation is going to come because one of the things that I learned um, that we're always in battle. We're always in battle. The evil spirit is always there. So it's always looking at ways to get you away from God. So yes, desolation is going to come. Then I was told, write down your constellations. One person said, highlight them. Put markers on them, okay? The constellations are good for two things. Um, one, you can record them because it, you really understand and feel God's presence in the constellation, okay? And when you write them down, I revisit my constellations all the time. You know, when I'm having problems, um, I can remember uh, one year I went on a retreat in Sedalia, Colorado, and it was such a wonderful experience. And today I can just recall how I felt and how I felt so close to God. So it's very important to write them down. And then the last thing that they say is grow in humility. Recognize God's gift and give thanks. Now that falls in line with the principle and foundations to me. Everything we have is a gift from God, including constellations. Okay? Desolation. That's a movement away from God. Okay? You have the negative feelings. Um, I know in the uh, spiritual exercise, we got two pages of positive feelings and negative feelings. Those negative feelings will move you away from God. The positive feelings are more in line with God. You'll be afflicted in turmoil, self-centered, thinking about yourself and no one else. Restless, negative about God, attractive to worldly things. You know how some people love money or love objects, you know? That's one of the things that uh, moves you into desolation. You have a negative view of the world, nothing's going right. Confusion, doubtful, distrust, and discouragement. One of the things about the evil spirit, it acts like a nagging little child. You know, the child that won't go sit down. You know, sometimes I wonder, I'm like, who is that whistling in my ear? It just constantly stay on you, constantly stay on you. One of the things that um, I was thinking about um, uh, Father uh, Jeff did a homily Sunday, and he started talking about habits. And I thought, wow, the evil speak has a field day with your bad habits because he just keep introducing them because you, a habit is exactly what it is. You don't even think about doing it. You just go on off and do it. So I thought, hmm, that's a really useful tool for the evil spirit. And then one of the main things, God knows you, the evil spirit knows you also. And he's going to attack you where you're at the weakest, okay? So that's where you have to shore things up, pray with God, because the evil spirit, I think it's unfair that he knows as well as God, but he does, and he uses that against us. So how do you deal with desolation? First thing, you don't make a decision, okay? I um, 
Years back, I purchased this house, okay? Um, I prayed about buying the house. I knew it was a rehab and it had issues. I prayed about it and I prayed about it and I went on and bought the house and I felt really good about my decisions. And if any of you seen the movie, The Money Pit, <laughs> That was my house, okay? That still is my house, okay? And desolation set in. It's because I had a contractor that I had to fire. It's because I drove up and they was painting my house the wrong color. I mean, if you name it, it happened. So I hear this in my voice, oh, I made a bad decision. And so I remember seeing myself sitting on the steps in the house and praying to God. Because that's what you do when you've made a decision and things get difficult. Because I couldn't go back and tell the people I don't want the house. So I know I'm going to have to stick with it. But I'm asking God's help in this. And, you know, I look back at it now and I see where one brother spent his whole summer painting my house. Okay, I see where another brother who's a contractor stepped in and started working all the, the ways, um, things that uh, need to be done for me. So I could see where God steps in. Okay, so if you make a decision and you're in desolation, don't change the decision. Pray about it. Remember that God is with you that you have all the grace you need at any given moment. Be strong and be hopeful and remember God loves you. Now, one of the things which I kind of always frown upon, the reasons for desolation. And the first one that pops up is you deserve it. And I really, you know, I hate to think that I've done something that moved me in desolation, but that is true. If you make a bad choice, if you sin, if you do anything, you know, um, it can be a minor thing, but it could pull you to those negative feelings. If you're being tested, okay? Um, when I was working at the um, Department of Agriculture, I applied for a position, and it was several of us that applied for it, and I got the position. But it was people that really wasn't happy, I think, that I got a position. It was one lady that I knew very well, and she got a position too, but you know, he had such negative feelings. So I had a wonderful boss, and he called me in the office, and he said, Pam, I want you to do this, this, and this. So call the contractor and tell the contractor to do that. So that's what I did. The contractor fired back a very, very mean email at me. And then I fired one back at her. And so she fired one back. And my boss is being CC on these little fiery emails. And then finally I said, you know what? I'm just going to get up and take a walk. I was working downtown, so I got up and took a walk. Okay, I said, I'm not going to send another email back. I got to cool off. I got to get focused. So when I came back, my boss had popped the email in. I want to see both of y'all at a certain time. And I said, uh-huh, you can going to get it. You're going to get it because I know what he wants. So I um, walk in the halls. I walk and run into the lady. And she said, um, hey, Pam, I think we just got off track. You know, you send me an email. I, I send you one back. I think we can settle this. I can go ahead and do what you asked me to do. No problem whatsoever. And, you know, I stood there and I listened. And then I thought, well, she said, well, so we don't need to really meet with Greg, do we? And I'm thinking, uh, yeah. 
But I looked at her and I said, no, we don't. We'll just say this issue is settled. An uh, email will go to Gray saying that, hey, we talked offline and we got it corrected. Okay? So I was being tested in a couple of different ways. The first way is, how are you going to, you're going to keep flying these emails back and forth? The second is, are you going to seek revenge? So sometimes we are tested. And then the last point, remember that all that I have is a gift once again from God, even desolation. The last thing that I want to cover in this first part has to do with making decisions. It's a few pointers that were shared with me and I want to share them with you. The best time to make a decision when you're in constellation and you're sure of it. You, you feel the overwhelming presence of God. When you have went through a discernment and the process is clear to you, you go ahead and make a decision. Okay? The ways for making decisions. The first thing is do your homework. Gather all the facts. Talk to other people so that you can know exactly what you're discerning about. One of the things I remember Father Mark telling me to do is a, a pro and con list. Write down all the pros for it and all the cons for it. And then you look at that and you see which ones are moving you towards God and which ones are moving you away from God. That's going to help you make that decision. Um, the next thing they say, imagine you, your death bed, would you continue with the choice that you made or would you want to make a different choice? And one of the things that I always like to say is, imagine yourself standing before God and explaining to him why you made that choice. You know? Because I always say, I say, well, you know, God, I made the choice with the best information that I had, you know? So that is um, the first part of my talk on discerning the spirits in the first week. Discernment of the spirits the second week. Not all choices are between good and evil. Some are among the good. Our goal in the second week is to know, love, and follow Christ focusing on how we can stay on the path to God while making decisions in our daily lives. In the second week, we continued to learn how to recognize God's voice in the midst of the noise. When choosing between good and good, God gives encouragement and support. The evil spirit tries to make you feel dissatisfied, anxious about God's love or his response. Stings your conscience with thoughts of pride about the attempt to lead a good life. It's goal to move you to desolation. When choosing God movement, God's movement will be delicate and gentle. You can compare that to a drop of water on a sponge, just a gentle, like a gentle soft breeze. 
The even spirit movement tries to interrupt their progress. The movement is violent, disturbing, and confusing, like rain pounding on your car window shield. God movement is towards positive feelings like joy, peaceful, alive, loved, and adored. The evil sp spirit aroused good feelings to tempt us to focus our attention, attention on the wrong thing. So the evil spirit is still in play, but it's trying to trick you. Once it trick you, it moves you further and further away from God. God promotes openness and generosity towards others, putting others' needs above, above our own. The evil spirit tries to get us off track, to pursue selfish motivations, or place our will before others. Okay. The essence of constellation is finding God in all things, loving things on this earth, not for our own sake, but through God and for God. Constellation without cause. No thoughts or actions to create the constellation. Constellation, once again, is a gift. The evil spirit cannot produce a constellation without cause. You should discern the action plan that comes from the constellation without cause. Now that's, they're talking about the afterglow of the constellation without cause. And I got a story about that because I got caught up in the afterglow. Constellation uh, with cause, it's brought on by something that you do, okay? Um, when I took the trip um, to Colorado, and I was discerning, it was right off of finishing up with the spiritual exercise, and I was discerning about whether I'm on track and whether I'm doing what God want me to do. I this would just keep running in my head, running in my head. And um, the whole week I prayed about it. And then one day I was out walking and um, I walked up to this spot and it was all these different paths I could take, you know, and just see, it just startled me that it was so many different paths to take. And I decided, well, okay, I'm just going to keep forward, just keep moving forward. And as I walked up, you know, it was a struggle. It was wind and it was all this was going on. And when I got to the top, I realized I was walking the station so the cross backwards. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's the wind and stuff. But also with that, I got the understanding that I was on track. Okay? And that was a constellation to me with cause because I'm asking God and I'm walking and I'm participating. So, and, and I, I always remember that because I was walking backwards the station of the cross, but how I felt about that journey. So, uh, choosing between good and God, consolation I call, cannot can be, come from the evil spirit, okay? So you need to test it. You need to test if this is coming from God or the evil spirit. The good spirit brings constellation that strengthen us and the movement is towards God. The evil spirits arouse good feelings so that we can be tempted to focus on our attention on the wrong thing, pursue a more selfish motivation, place our own will before God. So that's his goal. The movement from God-centered living to the evil-centered living 
can happen so quietly and slowly, we sometimes don't notice until we have gone a long way the wrong direction. So that movement, when it's uh, a constellation with cause, can be so gradual that you just look up and you're doing something that you really didn't intend to do. It's just so gradual. That's the reason why I really believe that it's important for us to be in touch with our feelings and our wants. Okay. Because the evil spirit can use that too. And when they tap into our feelings, you know, we like nice things. We like this. We like that. And that the evil spirit knows that. So you keep moving that way to your wants and you're not realizing that you're moving away from God. Okay, so distinguish the actual constellation from the afterglow. The afterglow, we can be vulnerable, okay? Because in the afterglow, the evil spirit can use that. We are vulnerable. So afterglow. I, um, after I finished the, I think the second year of Bridges, because it was Bridges 1 and Bridges 2 when I was going through it. Really excited. Really excited, wanting to do God's work. Just really excited. And I was involved in just about everything, you know? And, it, uh, and I was working full time also. So my evenings was tied up, my weekends was tied up. And then one day I thought, I don't have any time for myself. I had to go into discernment. And I had to say, what things I'm going to back away from and what things I'm going to stay hold to. Because sometimes we're doing the good but we got to verify, are we doing the good that God want us to do? Okay, because we can't, the evil spirit can use that to get you off track. Because I could have, you know, stopped everything. No, I discerned about what I need to do. And the evil spirit was in there because saying, you know, can't nobody else do it the way you do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. So, um... I did do that discernment process, and then I did say, okay, I'm going to get off this board because I've been on it so many years. It's time for me to hand that off to somebody else and reorganize my life. So that's my story on uh, Afterglow. When we are trying to be good, choose between good and God, the evil spirit appears as an angel of light. Might be inspired by holy thoughts and a desire to lead to pride, selfishness, fixation, so that your relationship with God will weaken. Then that's amazing that the evil spirit can appear as a light. That's truly amazing. If the action leads to pride or selfishness and distinguish your relationship with God, examine the beginning, the middle, and the end of your decision. Reflect on your thoughts, feelings, and actions and see where they lead you. Do they lead you to God or away from God? If you discern that the original good course has led you to weaken your spirituality, your, uh, spiritually, weaken you spiritually to desolation or confusion. It is a clear indication that the evil spirit has influenced you. Choosing between good and God and you recognize that the evil spirit has deceived you chose, uh, you chose the good that led you away from God you should carefully review everything 
starting from the time of desolation became apparent and trace it back to the good, to find out where you went wrong, do this to decide what to do next, and to help you guard against that. And I, that's very important to me, that if you're in desolation, you need to take a look at it. And you don't just take a look at where you're at right now. You need to back it up and take a look at how you got to where you're at. What actually went wrong, okay? Because you need to correct that. And if that's a vulnerability, you need to know that that's a vulnerability. One of the things that um, I found that if you have a habit of something, the good spirit is there to help you. And one of the things that I have been taught is have an action plan in place when that trigger comes, okay? Because if you have that action plan, it breaks that habit and you now focus on something else. So that to me is one of the best ways to deal with desolation if you have habits or one of the things that is the reason for your desolation. The next thing um, I wanted to share is um, some thoughts, other people's thoughts on the spirit and discernment. That's it. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. um, what, what you're saying about the evil spirit is, is so powerful, I think. But I notice in the world that there are so many people that really don't believe in that evil spirit. And I wonder if you have any Thoughts on why. She asked the question regarding so many people that don't believe in the evil spirit. Do I know why they don't believe in the evil spirit? I, I think. Um, well, we have a problem now that you have a lot of people that don't believe in God. And if you don't believe in God, nine times out of ten, you're not going to believe in the evil spirit either. Okay? You're going to believe that everybody is doing whatever they want to do because this is all that it is. I have no answer as to why, because this is one of my questions is, why people are living as if Jesus never came, that they don't know the whole story. And I think part of it has to do with people have moved away from God, you know? And, and, and I don't know, I think that all we or I continue to do is to talk to people about God and be out there doing things and being visible about God and his gift, but I think more than anything, it's the fact that they, they moved away. That God is invisible to them because he don't have a body, you know? People focus on what they see in right now, and God, you know, he's in the spirit. So I think that's one of the problems is 
the, if somebody don't see them, they don't believe it. Any other questions? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Ken. Uh, I think uh, that was a great answer that, uh, that we are moving away from God in general. And I think another thing is that Christians are losing, are becoming salt and lost the flavor. Because if we are getting drawn to the worldly things, then people can differentiate and they don't know why it's important to discern. And if we can't even do it ourselves, how can we invite people to come and join us? And so, I mean, that's why, you know, I really, really appreciate you make it so personal and and, and good deal all the rules of discernment in our daily lives. Because it's not just about making big decisions. Mm -mm. It's making the daily decisions. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, this is just a comment. Mm -hmm. Uh, discernment is or decision making mm -hmm. is a very human universal experience uh, everybody goes through it whether people believe in God or don't believe in God uh, whether they believe in evil and good spirit or not and I guess you know uh, for people uh, those of us who believe in God it's pretty easy to uh, sort of discern our movement towards God or away from God. And but for people who do not believe in God but yet experience this uh, exercise of discernment, I guess uh, their uh, 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 conclusion or uh, their feeling good or bad depends upon how they are feeling in their heart, uh, either at the time of the discernment or with the outcomes of their decisions. Now, that's a good point. Um, one of the things, um, years back, I got sick and I started wandering, you know, kind of like walking and talking to God and reading scripture, really seeking God. That was discernment. But I didn't know or understand what I was doing until I was part of the Bridges program. So I really believe discernment is a natural process within us because God's within us and, it, and we're being moved. But sometimes people don't recognize. Ignatius put a name to what was going on to him, but it was a natural, gradual thing with him also. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm thinking about what Pope Francis is trying to do in um, the Christian community, not just in the Catholic Church, um, and of uh, the spirit of listening, you know, um, in today's gospel, listen to him, that, 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 that the spirit is giving us the creativity if we listen mm -hmm. to how to respond to what's happening in our world today and how to love, which is stronger in the evil spirit. So, especially you know, young people, non-believers, what's happening in our world. So, um, I think at the heart of discernment, it really is to listen. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yes. I had kind of a, a personal aha moment as, <laughs> as you said something about, uh, it, it was re related to like an image of God. Mm -hmm. So this year I've, I've spent a little more time with what was my personal image of God and it dawned on me as you were speaking to her question that, so it, do I have a personal image of the evil spirit? And and it, so therefore, you know, do I believe in the evil spirit or who is the evil spirit to me? Like what image have I given that? Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of, it flipped how I was think how I think about it. The, my image of God and my image of the evil spirit. So I just, I don't know, it was kind of an aha moment from what something you said and I felt like I should share that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes. Something I was thinking about was, um, you know, when we choose something, we don't choose it because it's not good. No. I mean, we choose something that I think is good for me. Maybe I don't think beyond that, but I mean, we don't set out 
to see what evil we can no. can can do in a day, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I think that's where it starts because uh, you know we become the center, mm -hmm. and out of that everything you know does that suit me? Does that fit me? Mm -hmm. Does that serve me? Kind of thing. Yeah, and when we choose. It's based on something. It's based on our needs, our wants, our desires. That's what we're choosing. And then if our needs is, or desires are negative, when we still choose it, we choose a negative, you know? And that's going to move us away. So that's a very valid and good point. We have to, I say we have to kind of like, Discern, you don't really do a hard discern, discern on everything, but we have to be conscious of our daily choices because our daily choices moves us slowly down one road or the other. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, I should have put this, we're talking about the you know, I know a lot of people who consider themselves very spiritual and are on various spiritual paths and who don't believe there is such a thing as evil. Okay. Um, Can you say that we're having trouble here? Oh, um, well, I just say that I know a lot of people who say they believe in God and are on a spiritual path. They're very committed to their various spiritual paths, but they don't believe in evil. And um, because they say that God did not create evil, so therefore it isn't real. That's I'm just telling you what their explanations are to me. And, uh, you know, I've had a lot of different experiences. I've shared with them, well, I know evil exists because I've come face to face with it. It's real. Um, that doesn't convince them. They don't really care. <laughs> um, so I guess I'm gradually learning within myself, first and foremost, as someone you know mentioned, I appreciate your personal, sharing your personal experience, because that's what really moves people, not facts and theology and belief systems. Um, that I find that darkness, evil, whatever you want to call it, plays on some part of my mind, and I see it in others, that experiences um, being separate from God. There's some part of our being, our fallen nature, that experiences being separate from God. And so I'm learning very gradually, <laughs> wish it was faster, like even when I'm conversing with a, a friend, whom I was yesterday, who I just felt like was just so under a dark spell. Um, and uh, no matter how much conversation we may have about God, or do this, or do that, or whatever, nothing works, none of that works. And then I realized, as Catherine was saying, the best thing I could have done, after I hung up the phone, looking back on it, was to just have been a listening, loving mm. presence. And um, while to help me do that, rather than lecture or preach, was to just let God love me while I'm listening to this person. To let God love me while I'm listening to this person. And to let God love this person mm -hmm. while I'm listening to this person. Because I've tried all this other stuff and it doesn't seem to work. That probably would be a good approach, just to listen. Yeah, and that whole, so many people have shared with me, when I, when I share with them, you know, just let God love you. Or if they don't like the word God, then God is love. So I say, let love love you. And then they're like, oh. You know, I know when that, and Holy Spirit spoke that to me, those words, about five years ago, the Holy Spirit just said, Mary, just let love love you. I about fell off the couch. You know? mm -hmm. It's like, 
I don't think I ever heard anyone, I didn't hear that ever before. I never had the thought of letting God love me. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.